the Evolution Championship Series, home to some of the greatest moments in fighting game history. Every summer, thousands of players flock to Las Vegas to participate in this pinnacle of fighting game competition. Look at him. You can see he's emotional. He made it happen representing Pakistan. Such an unlikely warrior. It is a dream of every rising FGC member to make this pilgrimage to the city of sin for the chance at greatness. And in 2019, seven college students drove across the country to make said pilgrimage. What makes this event so special? What about this three-day tournament was enough for these seven college kids from Akron to cram into a van for a near non-stop 30-hour road trip to Las Vegas? Everyone thought they were hot shit at fighting games, so they wanted to try to prove it. Evo seemed like the most hype event to do it. I was up during like, I think the first half of your shift and that was horrifying. You're hallucinating? He's like, yeah. Today, we hear this story on this very special episode of the EX Dragon Punch podcast as we go back in time to Evolution 2019. I'm your host, Shallon Pretzels, and this is The Road to Evo. Our story begins on the campus of the University of Akron in the city of Akron, Ohio. It was the spring semester of 2019, and seven college students were planning for the experience of a lifetime. My name is Max Tense, uh, and I was a computer science major. My name is Alvaro Socek, and during that time, I was a mechanical engineer. Hi, I'm Town Crier, and at that time, I was just a psychology major with two minors, but after that, I was a double major with one minor, so. My name is Sam Wolfpack. That would have been my last semester of electronics engineering tech. And then switching to uh, CIS. I am Donovan. My major was Cisco networking and uh, I was uh, a Tekken head back in uh, the days before COVID. Hi everyone. Uh, my name is Mason Roberts, um, also known as uh, Cobra. Um, I am a computer science major. I myself was a second year student studying computer science. These students were all members of the University of Akron's newly launched esports program, which began the previous fall. As a club within the Zips esports program, these students were granted access to resources they've never had before, including access to university funding. While most clubs on campus use this money to get pizza for meetups, our band of fighting game players had different plans. The very premise of this trip which is the concept of sending a group of college students who live in, or at least are studying in the state of Ohio, taking that group of students and sending them clear across the country to compete in a tournament in Las Vegas. First of all, I'm even surprised that we even got approved for this trip. I think we were just the only people asking to do anything, and so they were down for kind of whatever we suggested. Everybody else in kind of like that first year of like Akron Esports was kind of like just figuring out the like how to like talk to people IRL and like going on events and stuff and like FGC people have been running events like for like for like I don't know like we really hit the ground running like I feel like we all started in like year three of the program and everybody else started in year one and so when we asked to do something crazy they were like yeah, sure, why not? But we did have to go through the student government to kind of get like approval and then also receive funding for for this trip, which in general, pretty, it was a pretty bold move, especially because I don't think the university really got that much like press out of it. Yeah, no, I mean, like, we, we just had it within our budget to do that. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like a, a like big funding request. Right. We just kind of like didn't use our money for anything the whole year. Right. Um, other than going to Eva. So all of the money that like the billiards club would have spent like getting pizza, we instead put into going to Eva. The plan was simple. The esports program would provide a selection of club students the opportunity to compete at that summer's Evolution 2019 tournament. The university would cover the costs associated with travel, lodging, and registration for at least one game of each student's choosing. There was only one problem. Our method of travel wasn't 
what most of us expected. Okay, so here's the thing about the planning for for the trip. We say we had money for the trip. But I think our initial premise was was like, all right, we're going to get the money to, to do this. We're going to get however many students we're going to get. We're going to pay for their registration. Uh, we'll get like an Airbnb or something, and then we'll just fly everyone down. How soon into the process did you realize that our mode of travel wasn't going to be what we initially thought it was going to be? Stay on. Did, wait, did did people in the club like think that we were gonna take a flight? Uh, there there was like a there was like an unwritten rule of just like okay yeah we're going to Evo that's a really long distance of course we would fly why would we not fly? Yeah, I, because money. <laughs> because money. Yeah. So, yeah, the options were send two people to Evo or send like eight people to Evo. Yeah. And, like I don't think the university would have let us send just like two people to Evo. Mm -hmm. Unless they were like really really good and then at that point you're kind of getting into like well why don't we just have like, a varsity like yeah yeah that wouldn't be a club thing at that point right yeah we were also pushing really hard for like varsity fgc at that point um because it was like a pretty drastic increase to funding but basically it just kind of kept getting getting like denied for like no reason every time um and then eventually they were like uh it's because there's no collegiate fgc circuit right I guess like the whole trip was a little less than like twenty four hundred. Yeah, yeah, because like twenty five hundred was our budget. So, yeah. so just just riding on on the edge of, of the budget. Definitely not enough for flights, but enough to make this passable. Yeah, it was just enough that we like had a roof over it. <laughs> yeah, because we needed to leave enough like gas money for like if like wild stuff happens. And with those details locked in, there was no going back. The University of Akron would officially sponsor seven students to compete at EVO 2019. Our story jumps ahead to Wednesday, July 31st, 2019. Our merry band of students arranges to meet at the vehicle rental place not far off from campus at 8 in the morning. Once situated with our lovely seven-passenger Dodge Grand Caravan, we punched in the location of our Airbnb into Google Maps. And that's when it dawned on us. We were obviously aware of this in advance because it went into the whole uh, planning process as far as like calculating gas and figuring out tolls and stuff like that. But I think there's like a certain like, there's a certain aura that the GPS reveal kind of gave or like at least had on the group. I think we can speak for all of us when when we say, never have we typed in a location to a GPS and had it say one day. One day and six hours. Doesn't even say hours anymore. Yeah, it's a whole day. Yeah, I remember that moment too. That was, it was what it dawned on a lot of us like, oh shit, okay. The length of this journey was split evenly between the seven of us, with each student driving roughly four and a half hours each. The Zips eSports program gave us a card to cover all gas expenses, and we had a personal bag of change to cover tolls. Yeah, I had the first leg. I got us to Chicago. Yeah. So you drove the, the first leg of the trip, drove us to lunch, and then after that, uh, Town Crier went, drove 12 to 5. Yeah, I was awake the whole time. Because so... <laughs> I think I got in the car and then made the, made the reference hey, you're going to want me to drive early because I'm not going to get any sleep. So if I have to go in the middle of the night, we are all going to die. We are all going to die, which I am still impressed that we made it. <laughs> oh, me too. And that took us to dinner at the at the world's largest truck stop. Just even like the presence of it, it had such a unique smell of just manure everywhere. And then you go in, there's a food court and just fun truck parts i guess it was a lot less like spicy than i anticipated like it's not even like like the out the exterior was like a gas station but like, the interior was like a mini mall yeah yeah that's a good way of putting it it's a it's a weird mini mall while being a comedic presence in itself that was also whenever our group came across some very startling information it was at this location that we and the rest of the FGC had learned that Capcom's announcement for that evolution 
the simultaneous reveal of E Honda, Poison, and Lucia as the characters to be revealed in the Summer Pass of 2019 was leaked. During that Steam link, we ended up finding out about the Summer 2019 Pass, which included Poison, Honda, and Lucia. In, in what would have been a very interesting trailer that would have been shown off during the finals, just a few days later. Just... Yeah. We got a fun little bit between, like, Harada and, um... And Ono. Because Ono came out with the apology scroll. He had to cheer the man onto the stage. It, it, yeah. Ono was apparently, like, really uh, distraught from that. Like, yeah, like, he, like, like he was like he was yeah. hanging out with, with Harada, like, like already in Vegas. And he was like, man, this sucks. And it, and then they ate dinner. It was kind of okay. <laughs> so I ended up taking over uh, the shift after large truck stop and SF5 leak things. So then I drove us until 10. And then you... I don't know how you made it through, through your shift because like... I was sleeping the whole time when you guys were, do were doing it because I, I wasn't excited to see anything. Else. Yeah. I had my Nintendo Switch. I had my iPhone. And I had a I have a hundred hour Spotify playlist. Mm. And if I went now, I would also have way too many audiobooks to not start. So I don't care. It was like ten to four or something ridiculous like that. You drove your shift and it was already dark and you were driving through like all these like winding mountains and cliffs. Yeah, that was that was my luck. Uh I was luckily I, I did it though. Uh no one died. <laughs> yeah, I was up during like I think the first half of of your shift, and that was horrifying. <laughs> Just being in the front seat of the car and seeing all these mobs, and I'm like, I don't know how you're doing this. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna be honest, I was scared out of my fucking gorg. I was like, why the hell are the cones here? Why did I? Why did I say here? Why I is this just bought a dim? Why is this so poorly lit? <laughs> yeah, why is this so poorly lit? It was, uh, it was something out of a horror movie where every turn was total darkness into our, our high beams hit it. It's... And everyone in the back was sleeping or I heard tapping on some dipshit switch. That's that's all I got. And I remember slowly turning up to music <laughs> just just so I, 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 I had something there. Liam drove from three to eight. No, he didn't. Okay, so, okay, <laughs> correction. Okay, correction, correction. I, I, I tell this story fairly often about Liam's driving here. I kept trying to try and tell him to go to fuck the bed. Because I remember the man, it, the man just wouldn't yeah. sleep. <laughs> the man would not sleep. I really should have gone to sleep, but you know, I'm hanging out with everyone. I, I don't I'm not that tired. Like, come on. It'll be fine. I'll sleep, you know, like towards the afternoon. Right. Right. That doesn't happen. <laughs> it, it, it never happened. <laughs> I remember exactly where we were whenever Liam started his shift. Al ended his shift in the barren desert. There was only a single street light lighting us. You look around in 360 degrees and there is nothing but desert. There was no sign of civilization in sight. I thought we were stranded. <laughs> we we were close to being stranded. If we had no gas, we would have been stranded. But mm. We had the lifeblood of civilization. So Liam cops into the car. I can tell that he is entirely out of it. After knowing the, after knowing a man for like 10 plus years, you get to knowing what, what mood they're in when you just look at them. And also and 15 was, plus hours in the car. 15 hours in the car does things to a man. Uh, <laughs> only, only, only surpassed by 32 hours in a car. Uh, and that's just <laughs> on the way up. <laughs> yes i think our our start off for me was pretty great too because everyone was shifting around the car i looked back i'm like everyone ready i heard someone say yeah i was like eh? let go of the brakes a little bit and everyone screamed at me <laughs> yeah because the, the door <laughs> was still open and Ian was, was getting back in i know he was perfectly out of sight when i looked back and i was like you motherfucker <laughs> <laughs> all right get in the car uh he gets into the car. We're driving for a bit. I'm, on, I'm in the passenger seat. I'm like, all right. So the first hour, it's cool. Second hour, I look over at Liam, and I can tell he's like, he he has his hands on the wheel, and I look into his eyes, and there was nothing. There's nothing in those eyes. I I see him yeah. begin to veer a little bit to the right, and then, and he like shifts over a little bit. He's going like 55 <laughs> on the highway. I'm like, Liam, are you are you good to drive, man? Are you good? He's like, yeah, I'm I'm fine. I'm fine. <laughs> So the drive starts, it's not too bad. It's just road and I'm driving. 
The issue is, is that it is literally just road. The only thing that changes is the dotted white line. And I'm yeah. extremely tired. Mm -hmm. So I start to hallucinate. <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> so I had a lot of um, funny black snakes crawling under the car that would creep me out and shoot me awake. Uh, I hit a couple shadow people. I had at one point the two white lines on the sides of the road like start coming up and like moving around. What? I was like, yeah. Yeah, I was out of it, man. Oh my god. Um, and it's like, okay, another hour later, he goes, oh, um, the snake just got the man on the road. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what, what just got the, the snake? It came, it, went, uh, it came from the side of the road. It, it got the man. Uh, it kept him from getting ran over, and it went underneath the car. I was like, you're hallucinating? He's like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm hallucinating. <laughs> Liam Sheen, everyone. Um, <laughs> he's hallucinating while we're in the north, the northern, northeastern part of Colorado, just, just outside of Denver. Yeah, I, I remember falling asleep immediately. Hmm. I was, I was dog tired. I'm like, all right, I don't care. And Liam, I was looking at Liam, I'm like, man, I hope to God he can stay awake. So then I woke up, uh, after <laughs> I think I slept for like six hours or something like that at, at the next shift. Thankfully... He only drove for about four hours while he was in this um, hallucinating, delirious state, um, just on the verge of sleep, but not quite yet there. Mm. And I tell him, Liam, it's time to pull off the road. And he goes, yeah. <laughs> this motherfucker yeah. looks to me and goes, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I looked at Mason because he got out. I was like, oh, he wants to drive. I was like, oh, I drove the whole time. Yeah, we almost died. Like, and I look at, I look at Liam. He's like, "Yeah, I saw the Shadow Man." I'm like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> like, he's like, "Yeah, I saw like the Shadow Man." Like, you know, I thought he was like jumping out. I was okay. so tired. And I'm like, okay. "I told you to go to bed." He's like, "I couldn't go to bed. I thought I was good." Uh, I consider him to have been delirious at that point. I would he, take he everything he considers he's doing himself to be delirious. <laughs> okay. Okay, so here's so Liam was right. He said he had like maybe like an hour and a half left of his shift, and we drove for about like four and a half, five hours yep. each. Okay, because the thing is, I told the other guys that whenever I was telling them about Liam's side interview, and they were like, "That seems wrong," and I'm like, "No, no, 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 no. I'm all, no, I'll, I'll ask was, Mason, and he'll confirm for us." That we'll was have to entirely. Drive. I remember it because they were the f most harrowing hours of my life. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> so he pulls off. I get in the car, I'm driving us for a little bit, and then we go and get, you know, we go and get breakfast, and Liam is, like, sick. My man is sick because he decided to drink a body armor that sat in the car, and it ruined his stomach for at least three days. Oh, so that's he drank, what did it. He drank a hot body armor, and it killed him. <laughs> that's mm. why he didn't eat at the barbecue place. Yep. When I asked him afterwards, I was like, dude, if he wanted me to stay awake more, he should have, like, I don't know, try to talk with me or anything. He's like, dude, I was literally doing that constantly. I even poked you and stuff. I was like, <laughs> damn, I never felt that. <laughs> oh, God. So all of my brain powers literally turn is coming soon. <laughs> but yeah, you know, after that, it was, I took a short nap and, you know, it was the next day. Can't eat anything and we're heading into Vegas. Yep. Fun stuff. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that was an interesting time. And then we drove, you know, the rest of everything. We drove through the rest of Colorado. It was beautiful. The Rockies, uh, the Colorado River. Uh, yeah, I, that, I remember that day very, very fondly. Uh, because I remember we woke up on top of a mountain. Yeah. Or like a, like a hilly area. And we were on, we were on top of one of the hills. We were in Colorado that morning. Yeah, and I was like, wow, what a beautiful place. Even, even I, my, my bum grungy ass was like, this is really nice. And then, and then I hear the whole story, and I'm like, oh, let's just go use the restrooms. And uh, we went to a diner there, right? Yeah, we went to a diner there, um, and we had breakfast. It was, like, the only time we ever, like, sat down and, like, ate uh, after, like, the, the truck stop thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, that was near the end of the journey. I think that was the end of it. I remember being stuffed uh, after that. I have I still have pictures of us whooping up at that, uh, at that place. Yeah, at the diner. I, I, that that's one of my favorite pictures from the entire trip. Just like um us like like we would like walk out of this diner and we see this magnificent view of a mountain off in the background and we're like, "You know what? We need a picture." Uh, and then the, like there was this couple that was coming out uh, of the diner. And we were like, "Hey, can you take a picture uh, of the seven of us?" And we just all uh, line up there. And that was probably by far my favorite picture from the entire trip. 
it was a it was a nice photo. It uh it showed all of us uh smiling as much as we can. <laughs> uh, all of us very uh, desperately needing a shower. Oh, uh, absolutely. I think no matter how sleepy I was, if I no matter how tired I would have been, I think I would have stayed awake. I would have forced myself. I would have pulled something up from the reservoirs to force myself to stay awake just to see the mountains and the river and just the sights as we were driving through Colorado. It was absolutely beautiful. Uh, through Utah, a, a perilous landscape um, known only to those that have existed since beyond the realms of time. <laughs> Utah was a funny place to drive through. Utah was a horrifying place to drive through. Like, there Well, was... look, it was horrifying, but all of our, like, eldritch abominations we were making up on the way through Utah was great. Oh, it was hilarious, <laughs> but, that, but that did not change the fact that, we, that there were, like, there's a point where we were, like, super low on gas, and there was not a gas station or any sign of civilization in sight for miles, and I'm like, oh, God, we're going to be stuck in the middle of nowhere, and we're not going to have gas. <laughs> You know, uh, that would have been quite a story. <laughs> that, that, that would have been another story. The, 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 the crew that drove to Evo and then got stuck in the middle of Utah. The, those stretches of just actual nothing was pretty, pretty brutal. It was just like, it doesn't even look like anything's changing. You could be on a treadmill. Yep. But then like, dri also driving in the city of Vegas was like an experience I hope I never have to <laughs> go through again. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like, I don't know which is worse. <laughs> and you had the luxury of having the the last shift of, yes. of the trip, which was just from, I want to say around the time we were having a brief lunch, I guess, in the middle of Utah, and then you drove us into Vegas. Yeah. There are, like, multiple different scales of, like, this is a terrible driving experience on the trip. There's, like, driving through, like, basic nothingness and deserts, which are, like, Utah, Iowa, yeah. like, the latter stages of colorado and like a, a lot of vegas well a lot of nevada outside of vegas mm -hmm. um, oh yeah and then you have like then you have like super winding cliffs and whatnot in like the dark with basically no lighting on on the streets that was al shift true. yeah that's true and then you have just driving in the city of vegas yeah that was bad it's uh it's not fun <laughs> driving in vegas is yeah, like I said, I'm. I'll be happy if I never have to do that again. Yeah, we. One one day we may return to the city of sin, but we will Uber everywhere. Exactly. And then to see the harrowing expanse of Utah as you were just exiting, uh, right past Rifle and, and Eagle, Colorado, um, back into the desert. Um, that for some reason there's a place called Sulphur and Cisco. They were once towns. They they weren't anymore. <laughs> By the time we were there, they might be again. <laughs> I, I have no clue. I'm not sure some towns work. <laughs> yeah. uh, and then Nevada. Oh, well, Arizona, there's somewhere. We went down a hill and back up like a roller coaster. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the rest of the drive was nice. Once Liam wasn't driving. Once <laughs> Liam was <laughs> off the wheel. I think I, I think I slept during that, that, uh, that entire thing for about four hours. I think over the course of 32 hours, I slept four mm. or something. It was uh, it was bad, and thankfully it wasn't for the four that we needed you the most. We were all pretty, pretty burnt out by the end of the drive. Even even I hadn't driven yet, but it was still it was still a trek. So and physically burnt by the weather in Utah. Exactly, but yeah, by the time it was, I guess it was nice that like once like my shift ended, it was like the drive was over. Yep. Uh, I didn't have to like get out of the driver's seat and rotate into the back. So that's true. But it was it was we were all fatigued by the time that was over with. But we did have to immediately, like, get back into the van and then also go and get our passes because, <laughs> you know, you, you know, uh, biggest fighting game tournament in the world and you don't want to have to get your, your pass and your lanyard the day of. <laughs> yeah, so w when we got around to the Airbnb, it was, like, maybe, like, an hour or so into check-in, I want to say. So, thankfully, we were able to convince the group to get back in the van after being in it for like 30 hours to just to go and get our badges which in yeah. hindsight i do not regret us going that thursday to get our passes no no that was a genius move oh yeah it would have been nuts yeah i said pass and i thought about it for a second i still have mine hey my arc system works lanyard the buttons from the different things are oh buttons yeah the, the, the badge is in question that we had to drive 30 hours, get out, and go, nope, nope, back in the car.
because they would not they they supposedly would not let us into the venue unless we had said passes. The drive was horrible. That's all I have to say. If you want to cut it down, you can just you can just get it rid of everything else and just put it. The drive was horrible. <laughs> the drive was bad. End of story. <laughs> And with that long journey behind us and each of us collapsing on the various floors and couches in our Airbnb, we then prepared for what we were really there for, the competition. Our first day of the event had its own fair share of trials and our challenges began as we entered the door or at least attempted to enter the door yeah because you and i uh we were the first two that that had to compete that friday because we, we had morning did. pools on that on that friday and the line was obscene it went out of the venue around through several hallways past the food court and to the entrance where we came in i am i'm gonna tell you it actually almost went out to the street yes a whole column of of las vegas was almost surrounded by a bunch of people wanting to do a wake up tiki yeah and we it, we were we were there like great. reasonably early and when we got we there it was already to the door and it just it, got longer after us yeah we got some swans we got some subway yeah we yeah we got some subway because i think that uh summer i had gotten a subway uh gift card from one of my family members for some odd, odd reason i don't know why i had it uh, and we were talking about the place. I was like, why Subway? He's like, I don't know. And it, it's just there. There's a Subway over there. We haven't eaten breakfast. Just get us a sandwich. Um, And then the line just, like, wasn't moving at all. So eventually, at some point, the T.O. just kind of, like, hopped into the line and said, Hey, who has pools now? Get out of the line and just, just cut to the... To, to the entrance. And I'm just like, all right, Al, hurry up. Get over here. Just forget the sandwich. Just come on. We're going to go. I wasn't going to leave the sandwich. I was there too long. I had to sit next to a furry and a very nice, kind black lady asking why I like Las Vegas. I don't like Las Vegas, but I couldn't be mean to the lady. After entering a side entrance, we were faced with the vast space inside the Mandalay Bay Convention Hall. When you get into it, the first look at Evo, the great cement heavens of fighting games. Yep. It's huge. It was the, the for those who haven't been to the Mandalay Bay Convention Hall, it's just absolutely just massive, just completely flat flat plains without anything in 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 there, and it just stretches for three yards. You could spend twenty minutes walking from one point to another with a crowd. Yeah, with with, with a crowd, it's it's quite a bit. When you walked into where they had security set up, like right in front of you, if you turn to like your your left, that's when you started to see like uh, some of the stations for the pools, and like it, in like the back right, there was a stage where they were doing the stream for, for SF Five. Further towards the, if you make another left, like towards the back, that's where they were running MK Sam Show. I think they might have Soul Calibur because I think Soul Calibur wrapped up that day. And I think whenever like as soon as you immediately walked in. Uh, right behind security, there was a booth there. I can't remember who the vendor was. It might have been Tenno. It might have been someone else. Uh, but next to that area was all was also the meetup spot where Maximilian was. And that's the same part where uh, the official Evo uh, stuff was. Yeah, it wasn't too far far down from that. It was in like that general area as well. Yeah, it, it was in the queue moment. They did in like sections. The seven of us were sent by UA's esports program to compete in at least one mainline title. Five of us would compete in Street Fighter V, while the remaining two would enter Tekken 7. And there were three members of our group who also paid separately to enter a second title. Everyone thought they were hot shit at fighting games, so they wanted to try to prove it. Evo seemed like the most hype event to do it. And then we went there and everyone got absolutely crushed except for me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I, I think um, like we had like a killer in like each of our pools, to yeah, some extent. Yeah. yeah, I think that's some random Ken. Uh, I'm seeing on this little slip that you played Koshori, so I, I think, I believe that's what you're talking about. I had think Adidas in my pool. I think Town Crier Ian had, um, Mr. Crimson. Crimson. Yeah, all right. So, uh, yeah, a lot, lot of high caliber talent in, uh, in the pools we were in, so. Oh, yeah, it's Evo. Yeah. Everyone's- You fighting. gotta be the best. Everyone's fighting to be the Evo champ.
Can you blame them? No, not really. So I, I remember I was playing Bison. I did a lot of dumb stuff, uh, as a Platinum player does. And I somehow squeezed a win against an Ed who really likes Cycle Upper Ring mm. at a really weird times. I, I do remember being really nervous uh, for one reason. Because I was, I was sitting down, I was smiling. And then everyone's like, yeah, man, I'm like Super Diamond. I'm like, yeah, I was like, yeah, I'm like uh, Ultra Diamond. What's your rank? And I'm like, yeah, I'm Diamond 2. I might have laid out of my teeth <laughs> for that. But I, I, did, I didn't want to, I, you know, like, I was, oh, I was in the pool of sharks. I was in the pool. Oh, you know, I, I can't say that I'm weaker. I mean, that's how they come for you. That's how they're like, oh, I gotta do it. I want them to try their hardest. I want them to sweat. Or until they figure out they don't have to try or sweat anymore. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I remember one... I think I remember one of the matches. The first one, I remember just getting washed. Uh, the second one, I just kind of like... I knew my crush counter combos, and each time he tried to cycle up, I just crush countered him. Yeah. And that was kind of the easiest. I think the nerves really got to him. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I remember not being too nervous because I, I've been to multiple tournaments and I kind of I kind of just know what to expect from polls. You just you're just facing people, you know. Yeah. Nothing much changes, but it does get to a lot of people, and that's just how it is some days. Yeah. You're just spooked, and and I remember the last guy. I think I was able to take a game or a set off of him. I can't remember really well, but that was because I switched to Blanca. Mm. And he's like, "Oh, you should have played Blanca in the first game." Everyone was like tripping behind me. And all, all I remember, the only reason why I, I remember I took a game is because I just, I just did a bunch of Blanca cheese. Because that's all really he is. I, I I got my ass whipped and I got to be triggered too. And then I just hit him with every like reversed overhead command grab dumb shenanigans you could have. Yeah. So uh, no, that's, and then uh, I lost. And that was it. And then I remember we had to, I really wanted to go back because I was really tired. And I wanted to go to bed. Yep. <laughs> Not being surrounded by a bunch of people. The struggle of morning pools. Yeah, no, it, they're, they're cursed. I don't remember who I ended up getting eliminated by, but the first match was against a Bison, and I remember losing that. And then the next match, I played a Ryu, and I beat him. And I don't remember. I don't remember um, exactly who the guy who eliminated me played. A part of me wishes that I had, like filmed my matches or had someone film it but we but we were the only two from our group that were there and you had pools to go to as well so yeah no i, I there's no way i could have been out so for context you competed in two games you're one of the few people that went on this uh trip with us who competed in multiple titles yeah oh dang what were those titles <laughs> <laughs> you competed in street fighter 5 and you also competed in Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. It's true, I totally forgot about that, yeah. Ultimate bracket that year was, no offense to the people I faced or anyone else, but like that was the biggest ultimate bracket for a reason. Like the game was fresh, no one really was that hot right. <laughs> at that tournament other than like MKLeo. Yep. It was the most entered tournament of, of that event. Yeah, and then I went three and two in Ultimate, no and two in the other game. Well, I has it here on on the record. Street Fighter Five, Town Crier, one and two. Wait, I went one and two in Street Fighter. Yeah, yeah, you went one and two. I'm. Pretty Wait. <laughs> they had to have dropped because I don't even know how I went one and two because I don't remember winning anything. <laughs> oh yeah, I guess yeah. I don't think I played against my round one. I think they dropped. I felt zero pressure. Walk like driving up to Evo, walking in seeing the players like five minutes before my match the moment i sat down and i'm at character select i'm like oh <laughs> i'm at evo <laughs> it, it just hits all at once <laughs> and i i'm gonna be honest i made a really really dumb decision and not pick my main i picked marduk who i was learning and i was terrible with mm. so because i'm trying because <laughs> i'm trying to remember because like the more recent and memories I have of you playing Tekken, are you experimenting with Marduk? So who were you, like, manning at the time? Alyssa. I was far, far better with Alyssa. Okay. Um, Yeah, my Marduk was very much infantile, and me under pressure and forgetting things uh, wasn't great. I was up against the Brian. He pretty quickly caught on that I was under a lot of pressure mm -hmm. and threw out a snake edge, saw that 
yeah, I was I was too deer in headlights to even block that. Yeah. And uh ran me over. I am I'm confident if I was on Alyssa and had more character familiarity, I would have snapped out of it quicker, but oh well. Yeah. It's in the past. Yeah, so um game two came around, guy didn't show up. I got a free win. Hey, Excellent. You take those. Um, I went into the second match against a Josie player, and I played Marduk for the first game. Mm -hmm. And then after getting my ass whipped, I was like, I, I can't do this. I have to at least <laughs> do something. So I switched to Alyssa. Um, I brought it down to final, final round, and he like barely inched out the win, and I was like, damn. Mm -hmm. But, you know, it's how it goes. I played Tekken, I played Lei Wu Long, my, my child, my, the only cop that I will ever play in a fighting game. <laughs> great, great character, so much fun. I, I miss him every day. So with that being said, how did your competitive run in EVO go? EVO, 0 and 2, and I'm proud of it. <laughs> it was a proud 0 and 2, but it was- Proud 0 and 2. It was, it was, I got whipped. But I got whipped. Okay, so it wasn't close. Then. That was going to be my next question. <laughs> no, there was no one of them. One of them, I one of them was uh, one and one, and then I uh, I got washed the last uh, the last game. I was bashed over the head with the Shaheen. Oh. <laughs> he kicked me in the head. I died. <laughs> he died a very horrible death. I think I I think I pulled out Fang against him, and I did better than with Lay, but I should have just stuck my guns. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. That's fair. It's a good time, you know. Evo, Evo taught taught me a lot, and it was just fun to go to. I mean, hell, seeing a lot of people that are into the same things that you are, awesome. The average for the entire group is that we pretty much all went one and two in everything. Yeah. The only notable exceptions are Ian, who went three and two in Smash, and Nick and Mason, who went uh, zero and two in their respective games. Nick so two was like a really hype O two. Was it? I can't. I remember his loser. I think he went like against like Sim, like both games. I hate to see it. Yeah, first round winners against Sim, and then first round losers against Sim. Well, I because I remember losers for sure. It was a it was a hype set though. I think for like a lot of us, we have been competing at the time for roughly a year at best. At most, yeah. So I feel like in the grand scheme of things, like five. Street Fighter 5 players, saw a number of them fairly decently new with, with the game. Pretty much all of them going one and two. It's not it's yeah, terrible. It wasn't terrible. And with that, our run at Evolution 2019 came to an end, with our merry band of heroes unceremoniously drowning in pools. But while that was the end of our tournament experience, the real festivities had only just begun. What doesn't come across from watching Evolution on live streams is that the event is half tournament and half convention. Between side brackets, discussion panels, indie developers showing off their games, and a wide variety of vendors, there was almost an overwhelming amount of things to do at the event. We have a ton of varying different stories from just exploring the venue, Yeah. in some cases exploring Vegas. What are some particular memories that stand out to you just from the event outside of the competitive experience we watched marvel 3 which i had never i knew of marvel 3 but i didn't really know anything about it mm -hmm. i just remember seeing shuma gorath and being very confused because i didn't know <laughs> that was a i just see this weird gross alien thing on screen i was like what what is going on so we watched marvel 3 for a little bit um we watched uh exerd which was my thing that was a lot of fun we watched uh guilty or finals it was really hard to find a seat for that mm -hmm. like that crowd was packed and they were pretty actually wild they were probably the most excited crowd outside of like the main stage games i do remember some incredibly hyped tournament moments is uh was at an actual i made fun of dragon ball but the actual grand finals of dragon ball where everyone was yelling to go the cell uh yeah. scream yeah man i love perfect oh. cell and, <laughs> and it just we, resonates uh, across the venue actually echoed you heard it like back and forth like yeah there was a restroom all the way on the other side and i remember god 
my ears. I'm like, <laughs> all right, I gotta, I gotta check it out. I was thinking about entering like the side of it for melee, but I didn't end up doing it. There was just so much other stuff to do around the venue and so much stuff to watch. Right. Um. Yeah, I like watched some of the like side events. The wind chambers bracket was so sick. Dude, if I knew there was going to be a wind chambers tournament, I would have entered. Dude. I would have gotten destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> like I saw that over on the picture, I was like, God damn it! Why didn't I know about that? <laughs> Yeah, personally, I kind of wish I had gotten into, like, Sam Show 5 Special, because I, I was there for SO5 and, like, Sam Show 7, and Sam Show mm -hmm. 7 and 5 kind of play similarly, so if you play, like, the same characters in both games, you can kind of just play both games just fine. I kind of yeah. wish I entered the 5 Special bracket, and just, just to see how well I did in that. Yeah. But, uh, Sam Show 2019 was a new game that summer, and it actually came out on my birthday that, uh, previous June. So... Probably best to focus on the two games. You know, it's funny you say it's best they should have focused on the two games. I actually feel like I really should have entered in a lot more competitions just to see what would happen. Hmm. Because, like, if it's not my main game, cool. I could just go there, mash some buttons, and just be like, yeah, yeah. I have no idea. Or I join the game, and I'm like, man, this game's sick. <laughs> like, I know that Al also entered in... I think he entered in the side bracket for the sailor moon fighting game um i know okay. the the lab zero guys the the devs who made uh skull girls they were running yep. like uh daily tournaments for like the the mobile game because they had just launched the the pvp for the skull girls mobile game oh um so i so i entered that um i think i entered that on the second day i didn't spend too much time in that bracket because i was like in a rush to get to a panel that was happening uh, Nick introduced me to a card game whose name I didn't remember, and I think I beat oh. him. Yeah, I think I remember that. Uh, I think I remember that card game booth because it wasn't too far off from where the security entrance was. Well, it was like yeah, it was middle of the floor because I remember lining up right outside of it to meet Daisuke. Yeah, it's it was like uh, between like the Evo merch section and where people were meeting Daisuke at. Yeah, I remember winning, but maybe I'm wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I remember there was like a gang beast thing going on yep there was the gang beast arena like right in the middle of the venue yeah. next to like the giant marvel vs. capcom machine that huge arcade set up in like in front yeah where the buttons were the size of people's heads uh, it, it's it, it was, it's hysterical i love it we were also given the special opportunity to meet some of our favorite players and figures in the community first thing day one um, we get there in the morning, me and Ian and whoever else rode with us, because it was the people who had the, uh, later pools. Yep. Uh, and we're just kind of walking around the venue waiting for our pools to start. <clears throat> and like I said, I had the Guilty Gear stick around my chest. And, uh, this was right around the time Sam Show came out, the most recent Sam Show. And we're walking through the artist alley, and I see uh, an Ukyo cosplayer. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, that's a sweet cosplay. So I just, I don't know what come over me. I'm not a very outgoing person typically, but I'm just like, hey man, can I get a picture? He's like, yeah, absolutely. So I, I take a picture with him and he points to my stick and he's like, you play Guilty Gear? I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, that's cool, man. And I don't remember the exact specifics, but it was like he said something and I said something and then it became clear that I was missing something. So he goes, oh, hey, I'm beautiful, dude, by the way. And I just like, <laughs> I just pop up. I'm like, oh, shit, I didn't even recognize you. He's like, beautiful dude's a great excerpt player. I love that guy. Or I love his, you know, his, co his competition. So I'm like, oh, that's insane. Like, I didn't even know. And that was super cool. He was a super nice guy. Yeah. Um, so that was a super fun interaction to start off on. You know, just meet somebody you recognize. They're really nice. It was a fun little, like, oh, shit. Hey, beautiful dude. What's up? There was, like, a quartet of, like, Sam Show cosplayers. There was beautiful dude as Ukio. There was a Shiki. There was a Darley. And then Corey Bell, who I think was in my pool, uh, was cosplaying as Shizumaru. I got pictures with some cosplayers, I think. Um including the, I don't know, you'll have to ask Nick if he wants the story, including the Mika cosplayer that I actually, I only sort of wanted a picture with her, but Nick really wanted a picture with her. <laughs> <laughs> so I had to walk in and be like, hey, can I get a picture? And it's like, hey, can my player get a picture? <laughs> but yeah, there were a lot of good cosplayers. There was the Mika, there was the, the Ed cosplayer was really, really good. Um, a few others. There were a lot of really talented people. The funniest thing that happened to me at Evo, it was me and Nick waiting in line for like, I think 55 minutes before we took a picture with Daisuke. This was before 
Strive got announced. Yes. So Daisuke was at Evo 2019. He signed one of Nick's fight sticks. I got an Elf Elk keychain oh. at Evo, and I had him sign the back of that, and it wiped off within two days. Out of curiosity, is the Daisuke stick in the background? Yes, it is. This is the Daisuke stick itself. If anyone doesn't know, this is the uh, this is from Chip's Instant Kill and Excerpt, and Daisuke signed it right uh, down there, which is a, a story I'm more than willing to tell, but this this is the, the legendary stick. As I remember, I, this thing, the T2, has the like clips at the top, and so I had it like around my torso with a strap. Right. And so I walked up to him to sign, and he like recognized the art, and uh, his translator was like, do you want him to sign that? And I was like, absolutely. Yeah. So I take it off my stick and hand it to him, and it was so funny, because he like looked at it, he was like trying to figure out what to do with it and then he like set it down in front of him and like put his hands on it because he didn't want to like sign it where someone would be rubbing on it right and then he was like he like had a moment and then he figured out this little plastic trapezoid here so this is why this is why guilty gear is the best fighting game because dice gay is mega brained he just seemed like a really genuine guy you know obviously we didn't communicate there was a language barrier but even through that like when he saw the stick and he he kind of pointed at it and smiled like you know, I, I just got the sense that he appreciates that other people appreciate his work, which made it a really cool moment. And then, you know, we got a picture. Which, and what's funny about that, too, was Ian took the picture of me and Daisuke. And then Ian took the picture and I turned to Daisuke to, like, say thank you. And when I turned back, Ian is taking a picture with Harada. <laughs> yeah, immediately after taking a picture and getting a signing from Daisuke, I walked into Harada. Like, he just turned his back and there was the creator of Tekken. And he's yeah. like, oh, OK, well, I'm going to do that. He was within two feet of me when I stopped him for a second. I was like, hey, can I get a picture? And he stopped and he posed with me. So that's my best Evo story was I ran into the two, the, probably the two best game developers who were at the conference yeah. back to back uh, within like 15 seconds of each other. So much so much stuff that happened in Evo. I remember I went around picking up some some people. <laughs> Randomly just picking up a well, group I didn't of people. Randomly pick up, I, I asked him. I remember picking up Smug. Oh, that's right. I, like, like, yeah, I remember. So you were like going around, like, fit, like physically, like picking up and carrying people. Yeah, as, as my photo, I was a wedding carry photo, so I would, I would yeah. have them up uh, for my wedding carry. I think it's, uh, it's on my Twitter. I, I think I remember you telling me this, like, because like you picked up Zero, and then you, uh, you, t you told Smug <laughs> that you wanted to do that photo too, and he wasn't. He was like, I don't know. Can, can you? Can, are you strong enough? It's like I picked up zero and I think I had the photo of me or something like that. Yeah. It's like that's a that's a that's a fried chicken eating motherfucker there. <laughs> it's like you're not gonna drop me. No, I'm not gonna drop it. He's like, oh okay. And uh that's that's how that was enough convincing to get the 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 smug to uh, to allow me to pick him up. It's probably one of my favorite photos of, of me of all time. Yeah. I think every single one of us who ended up meeting Smug ended up having like a pretty positive experience, all things considered. Smug is a wholesome man. Yeah. I managed to catch um, Smug, Problem X, and Punk before, like, their apparently, like, legendary set that wasn't streamed. I remember MK11 because we were <laughs> we were leaving to go to see the Street Fighter finals, and MK11 was wrapping up, and I remember Sonic Fox going through the stadium to get to the finals, yep. and everyone was like, like, Sonic Fox, can I get a picture? And they, you know, had to get to their match. Yeah. Uh, but they, I mean, they were obviously great. They were like, oh, I'm so sorry. I wish I, you know, but I got, I got to go. But it was, yeah, I remember that, that we were leaving as MK11 finished. It was kind of just like always turning around and seeing a top player was pretty interesting. Cause yeah. like I've been to, like I went to Big House after that and it was for the most part similar, but you could definitely like, there were definitely glimpses you could take of the venue where there wasn't like an instantly recognizable top player, but at Evo it felt like it felt pretty much like if you were anywhere close to the brackets, they were just, they were standing around around their friends or anything. Yeah. yeah. Like, like, I think, I think whenever we were, uh, like just casually chilling, watching Dragon Ball, like not too far off, like a couple chairs down was like Punk and Shine. And like, I think Phenom was there too. Well, you had the, what you had Mika player. I can't think of his name right now. It was Fudo and all of the, top Japanese Street Fighter players were like always in a group going to each other's pools. Like that's, cause like, okay. So I had no context for how good of friends like top level fighting game players were until that event. Like that was nothing. I had never thought of that sort of thing before. I was like, yeah, like you're going to be at least, you're going to be at least cordial with your competitors or else you're a giant asshole. But 
Like, I had never really thought, like, oh, these people just, they spend most of the event when they're not in bracket just hanging out. Yeah, they have, like, uh, their own, like, friend circles. Yeah, which makes a lot of sense, but before that event, I never thought about it. Yep, they, they so it was, it was pretty interesting for me to see at the time. They, they are indeed people. Yeah, the <laughs> top players are people, too. <laughs> They are not above us. Do not let the top player privilege to say otherwise. And while some of us got to meet our heroes, the rest weren't so lucky. Do I know what I'm really, like, sad that I missed? I'll tell you what all the Tekken boys are sad about missing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, who are we trying to find? You were trying to find oh, God, the man, the myth, the bearded legend, Eris. <laughs> We were trying to- Oh my god! He disappeared in a puff of vape smoke! <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Uh, oh! I remember! It'd literally be like me and Mason walking around the venue just because we got like knocked out of pools or something, and then we'd hear like someone just say, Hey, I just saw Eris over by this place. We're like, Alright, bet. Let's go over there and see if we can catch him. Well, if I remember correctly, that was during the top eight of Marvel vs. Capcom 3, and I want to say only me and Nick were watching it. I remember, I I think Nick looked over and said, oh shit, it's Eris. <laughs> That's someone that I want to say either Mason or Liam had mentioned wanting to meet at the event before. So we looked over and we both noticed him, and he walked behind a pillar and he never walked back out. <laughs> <laughs> I saw a man who looked like Ares and he disappeared in a puff of vape smoke. It's like, what? <laughs> You're kidding me. Yeah, he disappeared around that column. <laughs> what the fuck do you mean he walked behind a pillar? I remember running over to check behind the column to see if there's like a trap door or something. Nope. There was nothing. It just he just used it's just concrete. <laughs> just, just a solid concrete floor. And then I remember, uh, it's, it's uh, I have a weird like tradition. For me, like if I go to an arcade or something like that, yeah. And there's a final fight mm. uh, arcade. I always have to beat it. Yeah. So I was out there beating it. And I saw Eris, and I was like, oh, "Hi, Eris." He's like, "Hey, man, can you not tell people I'm here? I just want to play some Ninja Turtles." I'm like, "Yeah, okay." <laughs> I was like, "Yeah, that's cool." And uh, and that was to the Tekken boys because the Tekken boys were looking for him a lot. Yes. And the whole and the whole time I just like turn around as I'm playing Final Fight. I'm like, oh, there he is. We just saw him. Eris just wanted to be left alone. And I don't think any of us saw him for the rest of the weekend. Yeah. Like this was day two, and I don't think any of us saw him again, other until he was on commentary. <laughs> I also think the Tekken boys didn't see Harada at all that weekend. That, so that is even more tragic. <laughs> yeah, that's so funny. I would have I would have completed like the true triple crown if I had gotten a picture with Daisuke without Nick getting one. A picture with Harada without the Tekken boys getting one, and seeing Eris without the Tekken boys getting one. And then you also toss in getting a picture with Ono without any of the other Street Fighter players. I don't remember Ono being on the floor. I, I don't caught, think I, saw I him caught him as he was like just getting out of doing a photo with another fan, and he was like on the okay. run. Yeah. And I'm, like, and I'm like, wait, Ono son, I need a photo. <laughs> Meeting Tasty Steve was super fun because it was right after the Strive reveal, mm -hmm. and I remember you, you were like, Dude, there. You should go say hi to Taylor. I was like, oh, hell yeah. So I go over there, and him and I got to, like, have a little conversation, like, a tiny little conversation about, like, oh, who is that? We didn't know who Nagaruki was yet, so we are like, oh, who is that guy in the trailer? So, yeah. and that was, he was just another super cool guy. It was just so many, like, you know, you hear horror stories all the time about meeting people that you admire and it not going well and kind of souring your, your feelings for these people. But so many, like, basically everyone that I met was just so nice and, and genuine, and it was a really positive thing, so. Of course, you can't leave a major convention like event without bringing home a couple of souvenirs as well. And needless to say, we bought a few things. I, I was I was I was pretty broke. <laughs> in any anyway, I was like conserving my money for like food and water. But I bought a couple of pins that were pretty cheap that I keep on one of my Kwanba uh, stick bags. Um, I also don't have it in arm's reach because it's in a different one of my bags. But for my uh, link that used to be in the dice case stick, but is in something else now, um, I bought a Sin Charm and a Nikali Charm. Mm -hmm. So I have those on that stick um, that I still use. We just got a random button from the Samsung booth. So I have a button that says Samsung on it on my dragon, which is really funny. I, it's where the medium kick is for Street Fighter. So my roommate used to say, yeah, this medium kick brought to you by Samsung. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was walking around in the little vendor section. And I saw a guy who had some very nice pins and 
one from a very beloved series dear to my heart, Monster Hunter. I go over and I peruse a couple of them. And I see Zenoker, one of my favorite monsters, drawn cutely. Hmm. Way to ruin his character. And then I see Dodogama, <laughs> the cutest monster, and I go, excellent. Give me him. He is my child now. <laughs> I still, I, I can look at my wall right now, and I have my Evo lanyard and the Dodogama pinned right to it. Yeah. And then I think I also like bought like a, a stick that had Evo on it, you know. That was a minor purchase, but you know the Dodo Gallon <laughs> one. Just a minor purchase. <laughs> yeah, he, he bought the one out of five hundred obsidian. Uh, yeah, no, that was that was the mark of me switching over to being a stick player, which I pretty much only play stick now. So, yeah, lots of fun there. Yep the uh, the controller chaos uh, modded obsidian for uh, correct for, for Evo of that year. Yep, I also have it sitting on the other side of my room. A lot of my stuff is actually like in like this like little shelf here. I bought a few things with like the Sam Show uh, boots because SNK had some like merch there as like little talismans and, and stuff like that. So because I was playing Falk at the time, because you know we're talking about the pre-poison days, like the like negative two three uh, po before poison times, uh, I got a little plush commissioned uh, of Falk in like the exact like costume and color that I use and everything. Yeah, that's one of the more exclusive things that I, that I got from from the trip. Evo jersey, some posters, uh, high school girl posters. That that's the other thing that I bought there, which is uh, actually behind me in frame, right over here. That was also the year that um, season two of High School Girl was wrapping up, and they did like a big uh, they did a big partnership. Promotion. Yeah, yeah, they did a big promotion with, with EVO for EVO 2019, and then they did another one for EVO Japan the following year. So they had that poster, and I got my jersey. You got a pair of socks. <laughs> I also got a tote bag. Oh, you did? Uh, there was a lot of good uh, uh, kiosks, right? I think that's the term. Yeah. I, I remember being sad because I wanted to buy, like, an anime pillow or a body pillow. Mm-hmm. For like for like shits and gills, but the only one that was available, I think they had a, a pillow of Alex from Street Fighter. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah, it it looks uh I mean hey, do what you want. <laughs> and it's definitely a part uh, of Artist Alley I do not recall spending much time in. Yeah, no. It looked well made, I just didn't vibe with it. Alex may be Ohio's grappler, but this is not the vibe. Now, if it was like a one of Zangief, I don't know. <laughs> if it was Zangief, that's a know. different story. That, that's a different story. You know, who wouldn't want a body pillow of like one of your mains up there? Yeah. Uh, I believe you bought a controller. <laughs> I did. I did. It was the Harley Quinn uh, PlayStation 4 controller saying Daddy's Little Girl. I mean, Daddy's Little Monster. Yeah, that, that, that that's what it was. Yeah. <laughs> and you, and you, you just bought that on a whim, just from bought, controller chaos. A, yeah, I was like, I was like, ah, fuck it, I'm going. It was like, I'm, I'm gonna go goblin mode. I spent all my money on art that is hanging up to my right. Yeah. So, what did you end up like buying from like Artist Alley and stuff like that? Oh, I can just like, I can just like show you some kind of neat stuff. So much uh, art. Yeah, I bought like, um, I bought uh, a keychain of two B from the keys. Ah. Yeah, so this is actually uh, some never revealed before side quest information <laughs> that I went on. Uh, uh, was I was like pretty early on in my transition at that point in time, and I like hadn't come out to like fucking anybody yet because I was like scared as shit. But so I would sneak off from like the party and get like random like trans themed merch. From like all the different vendors and stuff. I got this little like chaotic good like D20 print. I don't think um, I even remember seeing that in the Yeah. Yeah, it was somebody who had like a bunch of like D D themed stuff. But yeah. But yeah. Gotcha. Being a little being a little pride goblin. Acquiring secret things for the horde. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure if you remember this, but whenever we entered well, whenever we got our passes, they were giving out these little like uh silicon bracelets. Um, dude, I've got it right here. I keep it inside my fight stick. I was wearing it. I was wearing it for the whole time I was like competing. Hell yeah! At uh, at uh, CU. Every every time I go to like a major, 
Um, oh wait. The, the let me not go Owen 2 bracelets. Yeah. Eight. Yep, I still got this. It, it saved five members of our crew. Yeah, did not save everybody. It, it, it cannot save everyone. Statistically, it saves about 75% of people. St statistically speaking. <laughs> so I went to this trip with a budget uh, because I had been on an actual like vacation where you buy things in years. So I had had like $500 set aside for this trip. Right. I spent all of it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I spent all of it. If it wasn't going to be on what I actually bought, it was going to be on like... I think they have like Asus monitors there, which I was seriously considering just buying one because at the time I didn't have any. Yeah, they had 144 hertz monitors at EVA for like a reasonable price as far as market goes. I think they were like 280 at the time, which wasn't too bad. Uh, so I almost picked one up at the event. How do I remember like the sticks and like the Astro headsets, speaker sets? I don't remember the monitors. Yeah, there were monitor. There was like... I only remember being there like a sort of like a pile of monitors with a price tag on it. Like I don't remember it actually being at a booth. I remember there being like representatives of the company or whatever and there being monitors. Because hmm. I know I almost bought one. Because I, I walked into the door with $500, saw the monitor and be like, you know, this would be a good time to buy one of those. And I just did it because I like making bad financial decisions. Right. Um, so let's talk about what I did buy. <laughs> <laughs> Um, here is what I remember buying. Uh, I remember standing in line for the Evo, like, the Evo shop yeah. for, like, an hour with some random Iowa Tekken player who I made conversation with the whole time. Of course. And at the Evo shop, I bought, I want to say I bought the Evolution t-shirt that year, because I it was pretty simple design. The kind of thing I'd like actually wear. I bought the Evo socks, which are I think the one thing you should always buy from your majors is if they've got socks, you should buy them always because buy the socks. socks are an important part of fashion. And uh, I don't really pay attention to the rest of fashion, but that I care about at least to an extent. <laughs> um, other than that, at the actual Evo booth, I think the only thing I bought was like the Evo pin, which has been on like my. Uh, switch carrying case ever since. Now, what well, viewers of this video, you, you may ask yourself, that only sounds like about, I don't know, $60? What did you spend the rest of it on? Uh, so I was the one person from our group to spend a lot of time in Artist Alley. Oh, God. <laughs> and I also bought gifts for uh, some of the FGC members who didn't attend. Right. I bought a Karen, like, not pin. But I can't think of what they're called. Like a Karen keychain for Killian. Okay. For, for context, Killian is the president of our uh, fighting game was club. Was the president of the fighting game club yeah, at who, the time. Yeah, who was uh, unfortunately not able to attend the trip at and the time. I bought something for someone else. I don't remember if I bought, like, Nikali for Nick. Or if I bought something for someone else. I know I bought things for two other people, and they were both, I think, keychains. Yeah, other than the gifts I got for... Others, I just spent like what I spent probably two hundred and fifty dollars at Artist Alley. My guess, um, I could show you all the art if you want. <laughs> <laughs> the, art, the art is all over the place. And maybe we'll include it as like if you have like photos, we can include it as like a video exclusive. Oh, I just exclusive. still have it all, so I could take pictures of it now if you want. If you want to include uh, a picture of Jury and. <laughs> Some uh, large, you know, <laughs> some large Guilty Gear Strive women. <laughs> but even after seeing all the pro players, the cosplayers, and all the action that happened in the hall, nothing could compare to the finals. Evolution traditionally has anywhere from eight to nine mainline titles. But only those with the greatest community support get that coveted Sunday final slot in the Mandalay Bay Arena. Traditionally used for high production concerts and major sporting events, for one day each summer, this space becomes the proving grounds where champions are made, expectations are shattered, and history is written. EVO 2019 Sunday Finals consists of the Blaze Blue Cross Tag Battle, Street Fighter V, Tekken 7, and Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. 
most of us stayed for half of the games to show it off in the in the arena we all came down to to the arena as cross tag was ending we stayed for all street fighter all tekken and then sam and ian stayed for smash and what a finals they were but i remember tekken was really fun i remember street fighter was a blast probably like the best competitive gaming experience i've ever had like i've at this point i've competed in what i've competed in fighting games at different events i've competed at smash in two majors i've competed uh various like league of legends online tournaments some of which i've won uh i competed both as a player and as a coach for rc league of the university but like there i don't think there's much that compares to like grand final stay at a major it's just the entire crowd is there to watch absolute masters of their craft perform to hopefully the best of their ability definitely the arena was the highlight day i mean sure was it cool to walk around with all the sets and then you know occasionally see one on a big monitor sure that's great but when you're in the audience you know just watching some really good matches with your buds it's uh it's pretty good no, the arena experience was fantastic. I mean, like the live commentary in the arena was great for everything that I watched. I, I had a lot of fun. The experience being in the arena is just like so much different than just being there on stream. Cause like the Evo team does like a lot of really interesting like stuff on a production standpoint to keep the crowd entertained in those interim breaks. Like when, like whenever you're seeing an ad being run on Twitch, they're doing something else in the stadium for the people that are there. Like they have like the crowd commentators that are down there. I think I remember for for Tekken, it was uh, Rip and and Steve. But you have your commentators like on the grounds commentating for the the massive crowd in the arena, and then you have your uh, stream commentators that are up in the booth. So you have them there, but then you also have like things like I remember during uh, one of the breaks for Street Fighter, they had like a karaoke for the Street Fighter Four theme, Indestructible. Oh, it was so. Yeah. Hot. It was we were all singing like total dweebs. Yeah. I, I, it was so fun. So as mentioned, most of the group being Street Fighter V players, uh, we stayed for all of SF5 finals, getting to see the good old run of Sir Bonchan. Oh yeah. And others. <laughs> yeah, and others. That was sick though. So, so this top eight, it had Idom, Bonchan, Machibo, Infectious, Big Bird, Yang Mian, who is a Zeka player from China, yep. Ichi Pamu, and yeah. Fujimura. Yeah, yeah, that is that is 2019 Street Fighter all the way. I forgot Machibo for a second. I remember there was the Nikali player, but I remember because Machibo used to play Sin and Exord, and then he played Nikali in Street Fighter, which is the character I play in Street Fighter 2, and I yep. play Sin and Exord. So I was there. I was like, let's go, Machibo. You got knocked out. Not Bye. too early, but fairly early. Early enough that I could pivot to Bonchan. I was like, all right, let's go, Bonchan. He got knocked into losers by Infectious and then lost to Big Bird. Yeah, but like I said, Big Bird played very well. Like that, uh, that top eight. One, of, one of the Big Bird victims. Yeah, one of them. Fighting five and the Tekken top eight were amazing. They were such a dude. Shout out to Infectious for winning Street Fighter. <laughs> you know what? My favorite, my favorite thing that I always love to go back to. And for some reason they clipped this. Uh, is that is that they <laughs> in the archives for the tournament when <laughs> when Bon Chan wins, it does like a pan out of the crowd and of the screen that, that says like the player's name and world champion. And then I just remember seeing infectious wins. He wasn't even in that grand finals. <laughs> he wasn't in the top eight. He was in the top eight, but he was not in that grand finals. <laughs> yeah, and they got to prep it for everybody beforehand. <laughs> but they knew. But yeah, that was, that was a good. There was only it's two not... options. <laughs> yeah, that that last that last match was really sweet, and pop, popping off for Bonchan was really cool. We got to witness all the things that's that went on with the finals. We got to see the name flash onto the screen that wasn't Bonchan, and. And the man popped off. <laughs> Oops. Are we? Which man are we talking about? A man who did the EX elbow on Wake Up somehow with no meter. That's completely unblockable. Yeah. I just willed my meter into existence and, and unblockable the hell out of Sam. Okay. 
So I have to apologize for that. I know nobody blames me for it, but I will feel bad about it for the rest of my life. The proximity so here's what... unblockable elbow. The proximity unblockable, yeah. Okay, so here's what happened, right? I was losing my mind. Bonchan won. Crowd's going crazy. Popping off. We're in a basketball stadium. So there's, you know, seats next to each other. So I'm like, you're like, everybody's getting rowdy. We're, you know, having fun. Sam is next to me. Sam's great. I love Sam. We turn. My arms are somewhere. I don't know where. <laughs> I don't remember all the details. It's a very blurry moment. He had his, like, arms up like this, and I thought he was, like, going for a hug. I think I thought Sam was, like, going around for a hug or something. And he was just put up, so I, like, leaned forward with my, like, face. Um, and then he was, but he was just, like, popping off and waving his arms wildly. But my arms, I had brought them in. The logistics don't matter. The point is, I was like, <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to adjust. And then Sam did something else, and then I just actually clocked sam with my elbow and i felt really bad and it it, it bust open sam's lip and uh i felt uh, pretty terrible and sam had to go and and uh make sure it, it healed up and luckily it healed up pretty quickly and, and sam was able to watch the rest of what they wanted to watch so um i i didn't ruin the day totally it just hurt but i felt terrible i was so upset i was like how did i manage to do that so sam unfortunately got hit by the by the wake up ex elbow yeah. I mean, I mean, Nick does Muay Thai, so <laughs> in tribute to the champion Sagat, you embraced your inner Muay Thai oh, practitioner. Yeah. Oh yeah, that was a that was a crazy uh, that was a crazy elbow. That was completely unblockable. It's insane. It's the best elbow my. I mean, I'll never do anything that good in fighting games in my entire <laughs> life. Uh, yeah, I felt terrible about that. But yeah, at the end of the Street Fighter tournament, I popped off too hard and hurt my friend, and I felt bad about it. It was fun to like, you know. Like, oh, you know, Bonchan, that's why I'm putting my, my cheers for this. And then, you know, by the end of the turn, Bonchan comes out victorious and you pop off. It was it was a good time. It was a, it was a great experience. It was a lot of fun. Yeah, because I, I believe in, in my case, Big Bird took out, like, a lot of my uh, predictions for who I wanted to who I wanted to end up winning. Yeah. Big Bird could have easily gone the whole way. I mean, it was a, he was playing very tightly that day. That was a great set. I think I was optimistic for Infectious and Fujimura. And then I believe both of them lost to Big Bird. Yep, they did. <laughs> Rip. <laughs> yeah, Fujimura was pretty pretty up at that time. He was uh playing pretty well, I remember, at that like that CPT season too, I think, that year. Yeah, twenty nineteen CPT was really interesting because there were like about five or so players that really dominated throughout like the entirety of that year just in terms of points. Like that's yeah. like that's whenever like Punk was on top of it at the very top of the leaderboard, Stokito wasn't too far behind. Yeah. Um, and then Fujimura was somewhere around the top five, I believe, as well. But yeah, no, that was a that was a pretty cool top eight for sure. We saw Street Fighter uh, after they hit like le the the reveal had leaked, which was really sad. Yeah. Remember Ono's apology scroll? I was just about to bring that up. That was the <laughs> saddest freaking thing ever. It was like, so... the man was so sad. It was so sad. Yeah, I remember not talking to you about the leak because you were the one who really cared when all of the rest of the trip knew it when we were sitting at that Wendy's. I, I know, and I didn't want to admit it. And then they Only for you to find out before Grand Finals anyway. Because they posted it on Twitter, and I'm like, well, yeah. I'm like, well we're at a gas no station. Point. I'm a, no I'm a point watch. now. I'm going to watch this before I drive. It, Odo came out with the apology scroll for, for the leaks. Oh, and so then Harada came back on stage with the apology scroll. He made fun of it. I mean, Ono was crying. Like we were trying, like, like cheering him up. It, it, it was a sad. It was a sad day for Ono. We had to cheer. We had to cheer him on stage. Yeah, yeah. I. It was. Uh, it was a beautiful moment. It's a beautiful moment. I think we could all like collectively agree. Probably the the Tekken Grand Finals, or really just that entire top eight, was probably home to some of like a lot of our favorite moments from that particular day we all stayed for street fighter and tekken it was interesting while we were sitting there because liam and i didn't know anything about street fighter you yes. guys all knew about street fighter but knew nothing about tekken yep so we had to like constantly like exchange what is going on here like what what is happening it's like oh he's trying he's he's vying for position so that he, he can actually use his mid-range tools and it's like okay it's like ah me. footsies <laughs> ah i love footsies Hey, what's this guy doing in Tekken? I, I don't know, man. I'm not in his head. I don't know. <laughs> He's walking around. I can tell you that much. 
Oh, he's oh, you see that you see that guy? He's trying to throw an electric idiot. He's just gonna oh, he stepped it. Now he got launched, idiot. And then you also got the experience of being able to witness history in the making and seeing Arsenal Nash become the unified Evo 2019 champion. champion. And awesome. I and I can remember looking at you like top six, top four, and being like, hey, who do you think is going to win this? Arslan, but I wish it would be me. Nee. <laughs> <laughs> he had an interesting run against Nee, mostly because Nee decided to change it up and start his like anti Arslan strategy and switch to Kazia for a bit. Yep. Which would have been great, but literally every single Hell Sweep he did was countered by Arslan in some way, whether that be a jump or a block. Mm -hmm. It was. Those were his opportunities to actually like turn the momentum of the match in his favor and why he would have picked Kazuya. Yeah. And he was stopped every time. I like Nate. He's a great player. But Arslan is just a mechanical monster. Um, and his he just plays... It, it's frustrating how simply he plays with his poking. He plays the just general poke game at a completely different level, at least at that time. It's impossible not to notice how much of a machine he was at yep. the game. I remember just sitting there with Mason, like, just, like, trying to figure out who's going to go through it. And when it was, like, losers, like, I think even before losers, I, like, looked at him. I said, dude, Anakin can't beat him. There's no way Anakin can beat him. And then that opened mm -hmm. the door for all of Pakistan. And I haven't been keeping track with the... Um, the scene recently, but I'm I'm sure that there's been even more more people from all over the place that yep. have been gathered into the scene just because of that. And I gotta say, like the the like main part of that tournament that really like sticks out in my mind just to this day is the look on Arslan's face when he won, and then just bowed to the crowd. Yeah, that was uh, that was a moment where I was like. All right, man, you're you're pretty tight. <laughs> it's a powerful moment witnessing it on stream, powerful in photos, but being there and witnessing that is just it's just a completely different atmosphere. Yeah, it's it's something else. There wasn't really a dull moment. There's nothing I can say I didn't enjoy about it because uh, I didn't get elbowed in the head. So, <laughs> <laughs> but but you did get catfished about Snake being in Tekken. Oh yeah, that was fucked up. I forgot about that. <laughs> I was so fucked up. Oh my god, I forgot about that. Just in the middle of the finals, they played a clip of Snake's voice actor saying, Oh, this is some good ass Tekken. That's some good ass Tekken. That was some good ass Tekken. That was some good ass Tekken. That was some good ass Tekken. And then everyone was like, Snake's the last fighter! Because, you know, like, why else would you have that? And he just, there was just completely unrelated. And <laughs> everyone lost their mind. That was, that was rough. That was a that was a big oof. They ran a whole bunch of like jokes during um, the arena festivities just to kind of keep the audience entertained. Yeah. Um, there was a geese player that lost in Tekken, and they did like a little cinematic of geese falling off the, the building from the Fatal Fury ending. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> there was indestructible karaoke in between yep. like SF5 matches, so they were doing a whole bunch of like little gimmicks and things to keep people yeah keep people like glued to their seats. And, yeah, some of them were cool. And not buying arena food. Yeah. I remember, I liked the one, um, they did like a like a two-hit combo demonstration where they just played old fighting games where they were combos, but the screen only showed two hits. So it would be like like a like a button into Hulk command grabbing an old Marvel game and you get hit for like half your life, but it was a two-hit combo. So that was a fun one because there yeah, was a bunch of stuff I'd never seen. Yeah, there was a two-hit combo tribute. Uh, I'm glad you reminded me of that because that reminded me of some of the other segments. Uh, there was also that Will It Kill segment. There was a Will It Kill, you're right. The proto yeah. Will It Kill, yeah. Yeah, and they would have like a, a countdown timer on the screen. Yeah. Just trying to guess was, how long it was. That was just for Tekken, right? Or did they do a bunch of games? They might have done a bunch of different games. Yeah. It was a while ago. You're right. I do remember that, yeah. Yeah. I didn't have any issues because like, they didn't even put it on the stream. They didn't put it on they the stream. Put it on the stream. Yeah. Like, it was, it was an inside joke. Yep. For just us cultured individuals, or cultured individuals that made our way out to Vegas. And the thing is, it's like, it was hard for anyone in the arena to know because, like, not because 
you know, like... We're in the arena experiencing this. No one's gonna be in the arena also checking the stream. So we just kind of like assume that some things that, that a lot of what we're seeing is what the people will be seeing, even if it's, even if that's not the case. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. I still think it was like a fun thing they did. Yeah. You could have baited a couple people, or like... I know that uh, a certain voice actor and a certain fighting game producer were not particularly happy about said joke, but, uh, yeah. <laughs> and, like, looking back, I'm pretty sure the next match didn't start so quickly because everyone in, like, Bandai's side, like, Karada and them are like, what the fuck did you just do? Yeah. Did you just, like, tease Steak and we don't have Steak? We don't have Steak. <laughs> Like, I, I remember, like, it just cutting back to the crowd cameras, Tasty Steve's on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> Rip is trying his best to regain composure to make some sort of commentary. Rip, Rip's just, like, looking around, just like, what was that? What, what was that? Me and Mason spent the rest of the night trying to theorize, like, how his moveset's going to play out because there's so many different ways they could do it. And it would be so great, and he'd be such a good fit. Yep. Well, like, David Hayter didn't even know what he was doing it for, because that was, like, breach of contract, technically. Like, oh, God, yeah, that was a mess. Yeah, because, like, the Evo staff, like, commissioned him to do it for, like, a cameo thing. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, he wasn't happy. Har Harada was not happy. Yeah, because if you're Harada, you're like, well, this is going to be annoying. <laughs> oh, no, give me that apology scroll. <laughs> I gotta apologize for a thing oh, that, I didn't do. That was a really funny running gag, was the <laughs> Karata with Ono's documents or whatever. I remember finding out it was like fake on like the drive, um, like whenever we were leaving to go back to the Airbnb while um, Sam and Ian were still at, um, oh yes, we're still there. I remember being on my phone and I'm like, I'm like scrolling through Twitter, I'm like, Guys, that was fake. <laughs> that 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 wasn't a, that wasn't a reveal. Cause we, cause, yeah. I, cause I remember thinking like we were like talking in the car like, oh man, it's gonna be snake match if we're riding. Like, <laughs> like yeah, yeah, yeah. We were hyped up and we couldn't believe it. And I I very vividly remember you saying that and me going, nah, I don't buy it. it was... I don't I don't want to buy it. I, I mean, it was that would have been a cool cameo. I mean, Tekken had some wild ass cameos. Yeah. Like don't don't even. Like, oh, that's impossible. Dude, they had Noctis. That's probably a little closer to home. Yep. We had but Negan. For <laughs> what? You're going to be like, oh, yeah, that's just a logical step. No. No. <laughs> uh, not, a, not a constantly downworld spiraling TV show getting one of their villains as the main character yeah. in Tekken. Yeah. yeah you're going to tell me you saw that coming? I mean, if you are, you probably should be at Vegas. Yeah, look, in retrospect, I, I've come to terms with it, but like, man it would have been cool it would have been so cool of course one of the biggest things to come from evo every single year isn't just the high level of competition but also the insane reveals for the future of the genre there were a couple of like really interesting reveals that happened during that event we got a jpeg image of the word kof 15 yes we got the <laughs> logo reveal for kof uh, 15 which, and for like got, an it, entire year i was not convinced that the game actually exists and i thought it was yeah, a collective fever them, dream yeah. until like a week before release it felt like but like all of a sudden it was like king of fighters is here at some point they started showing off trailers like every other week and it was like okay we know the game exists now it's real yeah we have it. They did a pretty short reveal season compared to like how far out they showed the title screen. Or not even the title, which is like the title splash. Yeah. There was also the reveal that Soul Calibur 6 was getting a second season. Yeah, Soul Calibur got another season. You got Safita's daughter, I think. Um, yeah. Or sister. I don't remember which is which. I'm not sure what the relation is. I'm not super. I think it's daughter because she sits on people's face and that doesn't seem like the same <laughs> Cut that out. <laughs> oh. There was the Sam Show bonus character reveal for the season pass one because we knew we were getting like, uh, we knew we were getting Rima Ruru because that was the next character in line, I think. But basically, the Sam Show devs decided, hey, we have free time. Here's an extra character for those who bought the season pass, and they ended up giving us Shizumaru for free. We also had the first teaser for Leroy in Tekken. Yeah, that was hype. 
we could all hope he came out a little bit better but <laughs> you know because like you have that like first teaser that everyone loved we didn't even have gameplay uh shown to us at evo and then you get to like the twt finals and we get like this like big flashy trailer that like plays like a music video. oh yeah and all of his moves look sick and everyone's like damn i can't wait to play him yeah that's got to be one of the most upsetting releases just because <laughs> like he's such a cool design but i'm like forever just gonna have a distaste because of it uh, and that sucks but oh well that reveal was like the hypest thing ever because yes. he looked super duper cool oh it was awesome and then he was an absolute man that like arguably <laughs> tekken 7 is now off the rails <laughs> And that's when it started. <laughs> Six Leroy's in Evo Japan 2020. That was crazy. And I laughed. <laughs> I thought it was hilarious. That was crazy. As a spectator, I enjoyed it. Because I wasn't playing it. Oh, Leroy into Fakum Rom is like a true one-two punch to really fuck up a competitive scene. Yep. The biggest thing, the thing that made my blood rise, I started screaming. I became a Ravage fan. It was the Strive trailer. That was so sick. That was so sick. Also, standing ne next to Nick during the Strive trailer, he had already given me a bloody lip at that point. And then whenever we sensed that the Strive reveal was coming at the end of Tekken, <laughs> yeah. this man was like, all right, I'm going to jump down to this row in front of us. There's no one here. <laughs> yeah, it emptied out before that happened. Yeah. So once, once I think, I think we saw Arc System Works. And once I saw that on the screen, I was like, everybody get clear. So I just jumped down into the row in front of us where there was nobody I could harm and lost my mind at the strife feel. We, we see a zoom out of, of the desert road, kind of similar to what the hell we've been going through. Yep. And we see, <laughs> we see both swords of Kai's and Souls, and then one of the best bangers that FGC has ever produced in a while. Uh, just start blare, blaring this, its noise, the smell of the game. As, as they're just colliding, we see like some images, and it was at the point I still this thing is one of the prettiest fighting games that ever came out. Oh my god, that was insane! That was a cool, that was a cool thing to be present for as well. Uh, was the strive reveal being such? I'm a, such a uh, an exer chill seeing the strive reveal, even though I have you know different feelings on strive post release, it was still a really awesome thing to experience. Uh, so yeah, I was, I just I had to make sure I didn't harm anyone with that excitement, so I had to get clear of my friends, but luckily I only took one name that day. No Laura players were harmed during the Strife <laughs> reveal. Oh, exactly. That was a good time, though. That was a lot of fun. All of us lost our collected gourds. It was so amazing. Yeah. And, uh, just hearing the song blaring at it and they're like you like that shit and they're like yeah show me some more like, yeah and then we didn't get much until like later <laughs> yeah well COVID happened so Co Co COVID yeah. happened and then the games release they got pushed back from i think it was supposed to come out like fall of 2020 and, and the game yeah. pushed back yeah summer summer right yeah i remember that being very magical yeah and, and very explosive just having i'm like this is it baby i know this is gonna be a great game I am. I'm a fanboy again. I feel like I was cheering for like my favorite sporting event or something like that. It's, yeah. I don't really get that much of sports, but the right then and there, I, I just felt like I was losing my mind. And just like that, our journey in Las Vegas was over. Although our merry band of students ended up drowning in pools, the seven of us came away from this trip with a new perspective on the games that we drove over 60 hours to play. Do you feel like attending Evo changed your perspective on fighting games? It's like being there, having that experience. You know, that I feel like that's too small of a word to just say fighting games. I'll say esports in general. I think it definitely shifted how I kind of view esports as a whole, because it was like the first event that I had been to that had like that sort of scale for spectators. Mm -hmm. um, like every major I'd been to beforehand was just kind of like a, a like stage and a venue hall where like they they just had like folding chairs in front and then like evo was like a whole ass basketball arena like it was on the scale of like a sold out concert and it kind of it definitely kind of like shifted my perspective on like how big the like spectator side of esports could be if you asked me back in high school if i would ever attend an esports event 
I would tell you, you are out of your mind. So, actually going to EVO and competing really made me, like, appreciate tournaments a lot more. It definitely got me hyped a lot more. It really made me plunge a lot more deeper into whatever I wanted to do. I think the one thing EVO gave to me was, like, hey, you you should play these other games, because, like... Yeah, you've been putting some some reasonable time into Street Fighter. Sure, you aren't as bad as you once were. Yep. But, like, I think the enjoyment out of fighting games is playing more than one. It, it certainly hasn't affected anything, like, practical about the way I play fighting games. I don't know if that's something to be expected. I think maybe if I was, like, at a different stage in my, I don't know, for lack of a better term, like, fighting game career, it might have been more impactful. I went to EVO and did the exact same competitively that I do anywhere else. So EVO was much more to me about the... The people that I got to meet and the things that I got to see and the experiences that I got to have. I really love that community and it was such a, a fantastic experience to be in that environment for that weekend. It, it gave me a lot of other experiences that I'm really happy with. I'm really thankful for it. It was a very cool time. I, I remember just enjoying a, a good chunk of time with friends. It was just hardcore connecting. It was it was hard not to see your fellow man after you went stuck next to him for about 24 hours. You yeah. get curious. Yep, uh, ranking up those social links, singing my way as we're hoping to not careen off the cliff. Yeah, you dork. But yeah, no, that, that's, pretty, that's pretty real. Uh, yeah, I, I remember that very vividly. It was fun. Honestly, as much shit as we give it, the drive was fun. It was fun to, to you know, just banter and stuff across the United States. Mm. I, I, don't think, I don't think I'll ever have an experience quite like that ever again. Right. Not even close. Because I wouldn't be that stupid to do that. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, that, so that answers the very pivotal question, which I will most certainly end on, uh, which, is, which is, would you do it again? Would I do it again? Easily. I'm probably going to come back one day. One I day. don't know when. I'm not driving there again. It would have to be very special for me to drive. Would I drive to Evo again? Would you do From it where I am now. <laughs> yes, I would. I would take that trip that time in my life, nine times, like 99.999% of the time. Uh, no, I would not get into a van with the six of you and drive 30 hours again. There's not a chance in hell. I'm 25, my back hurts, like. <laughs> so like Evo, absolutely. Would I drive? Maybe. Look, I'm gonna be honest. When we were driving up to Evo and we got to the Airbnb, I was like, man, this trip isn't fucking worth it. <laughs> <laughs> it's worth it. <laughs> you know. <laughs> The entirety of Evo is like, yeah, I'd do it again. I'd <laughs> easily do it again. Uh, we'll just hopefully have enough money for flights next time. Yeah. I don't know if I would ever drive like that. That specific drive with the seven people, like, shoulder to shoulder, no comfortable place to sit, maybe I wouldn't do that again. But I would drive with the homies in a more comfortable setting again, and then, like, I would absolutely fly. Like, I go to Evo, no question. You know, I would fly to Evo and do that experience again, every time. What makes fighting games so great isn't just the competition; it's the community. It's the people around you who build you up so that way you can be the best version of yourself. We go into every match placing not only our personal pride on the line, but also carrying the contributions of those who brought us there. Evo captures what's best about the fighting game community and puts it on the grandest stage for the whole world to see. So the next time that you witness a fighting game tournament, never forget that amidst all the bowing and the tears is the culmination of a community's passion given form. It's the result of hard work, long hours, and the will to keep winning. The will to make the dream happen. And it's that will that defines champions. It's that will that makes fighting games so something cool. so great. Thank you so much. Thank you for watching this special episode of the EX Dragon Punch podcast. Make sure to like this video as well as subscribe to make sure you get notified about future episodes. Doing this helps to ensure that this podcast gets shown to more people and also lets us know that you enjoy our work. So thank you. I want to give a very special thanks to our guests on this episode, Wolfpack, Mato Chancho, Town Crier, Donovan, Max Tents, and Cobra. You can find all of their socials as well as my own in the description below. 
I also want to give a very special thanks to the University of Akron and the Zips Esports program. Literally, this trip would not have been possible without their contributions. So thank you, and go Zips. I've been your host, Shallon Pretzels, and we'll see you next time on the AX Dragon Punch podcast. Reflection does the truth. It's everything what's all to be told. I need the math.